Greetings, my brothers and sisters. Are you ready to get into the Word of God? I am. Praise the Lord. Let's go. Baptist Church of Covington, Georgia from a few years ago singing He Keeps on Blessing Me over and over and over again. And yes, God do. God continues to bless us each and every day of our life just as sure as we got our life, our health, and our strength. As long as we got breath in our body, the active use of our limbs. As long as we just, we got the sight. As long as we, we can walk, we can talk. Just as sure as he keep doing this and blessing us to get up each and every day, he is blessing us over and over again. And, and, and because of that, we just have to give God praise. That's all. We just have to give God the praise for he is worthy to be praised. You know, uh, we don't want to get into church service right now, but hallelujah, God is so worthy to be praised. Oh, when you when you just think of the goodness of Jesus and 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 all that he done for you not just some of the things no not just a few things but when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that hallelujah that I'm blessed with that the Lord has done my soul shouts hallelujah and I just give thank God I thank God for his salvation I thank God for his healing touch. I thank God for his guidance. I thank God for his protection. I thank God for all that he do. I thank God for his son. I thank God for the Holy Ghost that he leads to guide us and protect us each and every day of our life. So yes, the Lord keep on blessing us over and over again. We'll hear a little bit more of that at the end of the Bible study. But today we're going to, we're going to get back into our Bible study. Yes, this is me, Elder Robert L. Bradley, with Rightly Dividing the Word of Truth. And today we're going to come with you with Genesis chapter 3. I told you we're going to do Genesis chapter 1, 2, and 3. Amen. And we're going to do chapter 3 today. Amen. And remember, uh, chapter 1 was sort of the movie trailer. Chapter 2 was uh, basically uh, how, how God did in chapter 1. He, he brought step by step in chapter 2 what how he created in chapter 1. Amen. And today we're going to go a little deeper. We're going to go a little bit further into chapter 3. Now some things happen in chapter 3 that you're going to really, 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 really pay attention to and really notice. Now let's start. Genesis chapter 3. Even from the first sentence of chapter 3. Listen what it says. Genesis chapter 3 verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. He said unto the woman, Yea, has God said, 
ye should not eat of every tree in the garden. Listen how this slick. Now, we, the word subtle, subtle means sly, artful, cunning, uh, smooth operator. That's that's basically, we just rounded up. Uh, like we used to say back in the day, uh, you know, you come up with that, with that, thank you, slick, come up with that, that smooth rap. He went to, to Eve. Oh, Devon, Devon there and suave and he just went to Eve and, and said to her, said to her, and, and, and we're gonna, we're gonna, let, let, let's just first off talk about the serpent. You know, um, God did create the serpent, but in Luke 10 and 18, we hear how God cast down Satan as lightning. And when he cast down Satan as lightning, Satan found one of God's creations to go into. And that creation, hallelujah, was the serpent. Now listen what what, what it, this, that old serpent said. It said, Ye should not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman replied in, 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 chapter, in verse 2, it said, she said, And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat up the fruit of the tree of the garden, but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Now, this slick serpent, this slick demon, this slick uh, uh, creature, this slick beast, Look what! Look what! Look what! How how it, how it came and approached. Look how it approached the woman again. Look now. Listen. Listen to how it approached the woman. And the serpent said unto the woman, "You should not surely die." And they're like, you know, I could imagine she stretching her eyes and talking about, "What you? What are you talking about? What what what? What do you mean? I should not surely die?" And the serpent went on to tell her. It said. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods. That's small g, not capital G, O D S, but small g, O D. Knowing good and evil. Now, listen, listen to this. What he, he's telling her. If you don't know evil all you are going to do is good that applies to life right now if you raise up a child in the way that they should go if you train up a child in the way that they should do good if you project in a child's life the goodness the things to do right <clears throat> not letting them be a part of evil deeds or evil ways or evil wrongdoing. If you train up and you teach them the goodness, especially the goodness of God, you know, they would see evil. And like the scripture said, you are to shun the very appearance of evil. So if you train them up and they see something that's that's not right and you train them up especially in the, in the way of the Ten Commandments and the way of love and the way of teaching how, how the Lord has instructed us when they see or uh, hear evil they're going to shun in other words they're going to turn and, and they're going to walk away I don't want to be a part of evil just like this the serpent came to Eve telling Eve you're going to know the difference between good and evil. If all Eve them knew was good, if they only knew, they would have never been presented with evil. And if that's the case, <laughs> the serpent was the evil one. He was the one that bought evil. So he was letting Eve know right then, oh, you eat up that fruit, you're going to know about me. That's what the serpent said. Hey, you're going to know the things I possess and the things that I, that I can do. I, you're going to see the evilness. 
And it, it, it struck Eve's curiosity. Yes, it did. Yes, it did. Because it, it uh, went on in the fifth verse. L listen to how it struck Eve's curiosity. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, mm, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be des desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. Now this this when this when the man who knew better but because the the, the slick talking serpent serpent excuse me the slick talking serpent had had got into his wife it got into his, the woman that, that God had blessed him with because, believe it or not, he had not yet named her. He just continued to call her woman. Okay, but we're going to get into when he give her, her, when Adam gives her her name. Basically, he was just, he was man and she was woman. Okay, now, it says, and the woman saw the tree, okay, uh, excuse me, number six verse, going to the seventh verse. And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. If they would not have ever partaken of the fruit of that tree, they would not have ever known that they were naked. But because they did it, because like they, they, they didn't see nakedness. They saw beings of God. They saw God's creatures. But no, she got subdued by the serpent. Then she went and slick talked her husband, or uh, the man that God had, that uh, that God had took her from out of the rib, she went and slick talked him and said, I, "I can just imagine, hey babe, this is so good. You need to take some." And I I know Adam being the man and knowing what God had told him, I I almost I I tend to believe myself, me other Robert but I almost believe that Adam had a little bit of doubt. But because, you know, the woman went with her cunning ways all up on him and, and sweet-talked him because she knew she had already do wrong, uh, he, <laughs> she wanted him to do wrong as well. So what she did, hey, she went and slick-talked him and sweet-talked him and said, here, baby, take a, take a bite of this. It, it, this is good. And Adam also partook of the fruit. When they did that, they seen that they were naked. Now listen, listen to what's going to listen to what is about to happen here in the eighth verse. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence. <laughs> of the Lord amongst the trees of the garden. And where was it? Where were they gonna hide? They, they couldn't hide from God. But not, but but look what look how it started out though. Look what it said. It said God himself didn't come physically. He didn't send no being to walk through. It said God sent his look how powerful God is. He sent this voice to walk through the God. He just his voice walked through. His voice walked through and they heard the voice and, and God was calling Adam. Where are you? Let's let's get a look at the ninth verse. And the Lord called unto Adam and said unto him, Where are thou? Where you at, Adam? Just a voice now, where you at? Knowing that they couldn't hide. Adam knew that. Adam knew God had already put put him there to watch over everything. Gave him the woman to be his help me. And God was calling him. And I already knew where he was. And I asked him, Adam, 
Where are you? Because he wanted him to come out. He knew something was wrong because Adam had never heard from him before. All the time God was checking in, Adam had never heard. God had never had to call Adam over and over. Y'all know how it is when you, when, when, uh, <laughs> You have, uh, if you have, those are had children, you know, you have that disobedient child and if they've done something wrong and they go and try to hide from you, you just started calling them and you calling them and they, you know, every part of your house, you know everything and then you go and, and, and search them out and, and first thing they're going to do is tell an untruth because they're like, uh, son, didn't I, didn't you hear me call you? Uh, uh, uh no, sir, daddy. Oh, loud as I am screaming, you didn't hear me. <laughs> and you know God had a powerful, strong voice. Yes, yes, God had a strong, powerful, strong voice. And God sent this voice through that ice and where he was. And, and he said, I heard the voice of the, of, in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I wouldn't hear it myself. See, I told you. I told you. <laughs> Just like that child will tell you that they didn't hear what, what, what uh, Adam had to end up telling the truth. Adam said, I heard you, I heard your voice in the garden. I heard it. I heard it. But see, 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 I was I, I was naked and I wouldn't hear it myself. Mm, now look what God said to him. Look what God said to him. Look what God said in the 11th verse. And he said, Who told thee that thou was naked? Ah, God already knew. God knew all he's all knowing God. And, and what he did, God just went ahead and, and, and catch, continue to catch Adam in the story, continue to catch Adam in, in his ways, and, and consider, seeing how Adam was going to come and, and talk to him and be honest with him. This is what, this what God said. Look, look what God I asked him there uh, in, in the 11th verse. Has thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? And the man said, <laughs> Woo, talk about passing excuses. Look, look what look what he said. The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of uh, the tree, and I did eat. See, see, Lord, see, I I I, I wouldn't have ate it, but see the the one you the one took this woman. Uh, from made a woman out my side and 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 you know she supposed to be my help me and, and, and you know I thought she had made some dinner for me and and, and everything and she talking about hey oh, here honey eat this right here and yeah it, it, I ate it yeah yeah God I ate of it I ate of the tree yes I did yes I did and this is what the Lord said and the Lord God said. Unto the woman, what is it that thou hast done? And the woman said, <laughs> she continued to pass it. See, that slick talking serpent, you know, he is, look what she said. Say, the serpent beguiled me and I did eat. That, 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 that slick talking serpent, you know, he came and, you know, I, I thought, you know, he was talking to me so smooth and he was so convincing and, and I just bought into his story because. Uh, he's just because the way he was saying it and and everything, and I I figured it was from you because you know you you uh, made everything and and I I just I just listened to what he said and and I just followed suit and I ate it. Lord have mercy. Mm, mm, mm. Talking about past and excuses and excuse to sin. People are always trying to find an excuse to sin. When a person knowing that even when they committed a crime, it, it, when they do wrong, and first thing they say is, uh, I'm innocent. You know, yes, now get me wrong. Yes, there are a lot of people that's innocent. That there are a lot of people that, that do that that don't do things that they are blamed for. I I, I gotta admit that. But there are some things that people do that <laughs> They, they're guilty of, you can see him doing it. And they'll say, uh, I, I didn't do that. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. But God God had already knew. God had already knew each and everything that has been done. Now, this is how, this is how the Lord uh, 
began to hand out the punishment. Began to hand out the punishment of it. It said, and and okay, uh, God said, to the woman, what have I done? And he said, the serpent beguiled me. Okay, 14th verse, 14th verse. Y'all, y'all, thank you for being with me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above the cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon the belly shall thou go, and the dust shall thou eat all the days of thy life. And God threw down, so evidently the serpent was one that could stand, was, was upright. A serpent was, evidently was a creature that God had made that was upright. And then God said, on the, your belly you should go, and everything else is going to be above you. Everything else, all even the cattle and everything else is going to be above you. You going to eat dust. You got to slither through the dust. And you're going to have to partake and eat dust all the days of your life. And not only that, he, he added more punishment to the uh, serpent. And he said, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Now, enmity, that word means cruel hate. That means hatred. That means it takes, uh, it, it, it's taken like from the word enemy. And, and it, it just means that it's such a level of hatred that, that, uh, that is given between he started even with the woman and not just the woman but her seed which is mean her children but we shall hate serpents we shall hate it and not only that we're going to take and bruise his head with our heel that is just how much uh, enmity that, that God had put down for the punishment of the serpent and then okay he started handing out punishment to to the human snakes the man and the woman he started off with the woman in verse 16 this is what he said to her now and unto the woman he said I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception in sorrow thou shalt bring forth children and thy desire to be Let's listen to this right here now. Yeah, this, this Bible. Circle Genesis 16. Genesis, excuse me, Genesis 1 and verse 16. Genesis 1 and verse 16. It said, Unto the woman I will greatly multiply thy conception, and sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire sh shall to be thy husband. I'm going to read that plainly. And thou desire shall to thy, and thy desire shall be to thy husband. Listen now, don't don't get mad at, at at me or any man. But it says, and thy desire shall to be, thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall have rule over thee. That's the word of God, Genesis. 16 because the woman partook of the fruit it got sweet talk by the serpent and because of that the, 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 the Bible say your husband should have rule over you not me Genesis 16 excuse me Genesis 3 and 16 let's clarify it. Genesis 3 and 16 and now here it is unto Adam. The next next punishment was down unto Adam. Listen to what it says. Hear it out. 17. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> listen to what he, listen to how he put it now. Listen to what he said. Verse 17. Verse 17 says, And unto Adam he said. Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, 
thou have eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Curse is the ground for thy sake in sorrow. Shall thou eat of it all the days of thy life. That was a punishment. Since you want to go ahead on and partake of that, since you want to go ahead on and eat of that, since you want to go ahead on and disobey me, then, hey, I'm going to let you go ahead on and eat. Go ahead. Eat of it right now. Take And, and you know what? <laughs> the things you're going to see, the things you're going to uh, go through, the things that, that, that's going to affect you in life, is gonna you you're gonna witness it. You're gonna witness. It. So that's what you want to do now. Now it's not gonna be easy because listen what the verse said. Listen what uh, verse 18 said. Thorns also the thistles shall it bring forth to thee, mm. and thou shalt eat the herbs of the field. It's gonna bring it's it's spiritually saying it's gonna bring you some pain and sorrow. It's gonna the thorns and the thistles. Eating up this is going to bring you, man, going to bring you some pain. It's going to bring you worration. It's going to make, make, make you feel bad. It's going to bring sorrow upon you. It's going to bring sorrow. Yeah, you, you may have rule over the women. You may have rule over the beasts of the field. The serpent's going to crawl, but yet still, man, you're going to have to suffer. You will suffer just because you disobeyed. Go ahead on. But you know what? You're gonna feel it, you're gonna feel the results. Let's go to verse 19. And the sweat of thy face shall thou eat bread till thou return unto the ground. For out of it was thou taken, for thus thou art, and unto dust thou shalt return. You're gonna die. You're gonna die. You you came from dust, and now you're gonna go back to dust. But now you had to go ahead and eat that. See, you're already going to have to suffer some pain and sorrow and, and walk through things in life. But the sad part about it, you came from dust, you going back to dust. You're going to have to die. You're going to have to die, uh, uh, Adam. All because you were disobedient. Now, this is when, when Adam named his uh, wife in the 20th verse. 20th verse is when Adam named his wife. Listen to what it said. And Adam called his wife name Eve because she was the mother of all living. Unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skin and clothe them. God went ahead. Hey, I'm going to give y'all wardrobe. Yeah, no, y'all see y'all naked. I'm, I'm going to go ahead on and, and give y'all uh, something. You know, you're going to have your uh, coats and your wardrobe, shoes, and everything else. I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and make the frame, but see, because because of of your disobedience. But now you're going to need this. You're going to need these things. You didn't need these things before, but because you disobeyed me, you're going to need all this protection. You're going to need clothes and and uh, uh, coats of skin and coats and everything. You're going to need them now, all because you disobeyed. And the Lord said, Behold, the man has become as one of us to know good and evil. And now lest he put forth his hand and take also up the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore the Lord sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man and he placed at the east garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword which turned the way to keep the way to keep the way of the tree of life. See the Lord put angels there to protect that tree. He protect he put cherubims in with with flaming swords and, and that's that's gonna turn away everybody, everything from that tree, from the uh, way of the tree of life. Lord have mercy. Only thing Adam had to do was not get subdued and and by the woman. The only thing the woman had to do is not get subdued by the serpent. But because the serpent had 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 gotten evilness within his heart and in his life and 
wanted to have men as little gods, as G, small G-O-D, you know, he talked them into that and, and convinced them to sin. And the wages of sin is death. That's why the word of God, that's why God said to Adam, you know, this is what you're going to do until you die. You know, it's sad to say if Adam wouldn't have sinned, you know, life would have been better for us. But we thank God for the word of God. It's so good. It's so good. I, I tell you, I just got a glory, a hallelujah to the highest, to the highest, to your highest, because he's worthy. This word of God is good. This word of God is, is what we live by. It's, it's what is in our heart. Amen. And we thank you for joining us uh, every Monday. And, and, like, and, and again, on uh, keep in mind that coming up on uh, two Thursdays a month, once uh, I learned how to do the... Uh, uh, call in uh, thing uh, for YouTube. We're going to be having Bible discussion every other Thursday, the second and fourth Thursday, where in which, you know, we, we, we would love for you to call in. We'd love for you to join us live and call in as we discuss the Word of God. Amen. Maybe there's something out there that you need to know. And I'm also on those live uh, Thursdays. I'm going to have uh, guest ministers, uh, guest deacons, uh, guest Bible scholars that is going to join us and, and if you have questions or anything that you want to discuss you can feel free to give uh, us a call in to our call in show and we will discuss it with it so one more time and again thank you for coming in and joining us and, and studying with us on right wave ministries right wave ministries uh, rightly dividing the word of truth with me elder Robert L. Bradley God bless you God strengthen and God keep you and we're going to get back into a little bit more of this. He keeps on blessing me over and over again by the Bethel Barrel uh, Baptist Church Choir out of Covington, Georgia. Until next week, God bless. Yeah,